Praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We could all stand in the house. I was reading this morning Psalms 104, and it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, Sister Fran, it don't say it if you feel like it. it. It don't say that if everything's going all right in your life, enter into his courts with thanksgiving. But it tells you what to do. That's how we're supposed to walk into this place. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we face, Brother David, it's a mindset that I am going to enter into his sanctuary and I'm going to praise his name and bless him. So I want everybody in this place right now, just raise your hands for a moment and open your mouth and begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank him for his hand of protection. Begin to thank him for his hand of mercy. Begin to magnify him and thank him for another opportunity to be in the house this morning. It's not granted to some people, but God granted us this day another opportunity. And I want to take the time to bless him and thank him and praise him for all that he's doing in the house this morning. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah.
the price for all my guilty who would care that much about me let me tell you about my Jesus oh he makes a way together. Let him put your family back together. Let him put your lives back together this morning. Trust him. Trust him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Such a fine looking crowd here this morning. We're going to take up the offering right quick and I'm going to make it make it brief. Got so many different ways to give. Give the fire. We've got PayPal. We've got cash or check to Riverbend Pentecostal. We can text give to a, to the number, I don't know, 833-883-9311, text to give. God is faithful. I said he's faithful. If we're faithful to him, he'll be faithful to us. Sister Heidi, will you put the prayer on the board this morning? Praise God. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received my whole family saved and serving god in perfect health and abundance walking in divine favor and blessing i am blessed going in and i'm blessed going out and all that i do will prosper in jesus name amen the gold pants are for your tithing the wood pants are for your offering priest bring them forth in jesus name Nothing that 
Praise the name. Someone needed to hear that. There's nothing he can't do. Come on. Come on. Let's lift him up. Hallelujah. Jesus, I praise you. There's nothing you can't do. You can step into my situation right now. Oh, Jesus. The Lord loves us. Brother, he died for us. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We were talking in elements about Jacob and the Lord loved Jacob just as much as he loved Israel. He loves you just as much in your process as your destination. Oh my. Oh Lord, whatever you want to do, Jesus. Brother G, I was spending time with the Lord yesterday and I can't see him, but something, the atmosphere changes. I can't see him, but there's times, bro, I know he's there. And he brings stuff to me that I, Can I speak to somebody just for a moment? It's, it's heavy in my spirit. Yes. When I first got the Holy Ghost, and I was baptized in Jesus' name, is right before I left for college. And I didn't have it all together. And I still don't. I'm working on it. Amen. But... Uh, I went to college to play college baseball and I had a religion class. I had, I knew John chapter three, that was about it. I knew that I needed the spirit. I knew I needed the spirit on the inside of me. Amen, brother Shannon. But I'm going to make some people uncomfortable if that's okay, Brother Gio, but I didn't have it all together, and there wasn't nothing really out there that I may not have been doing. I did not have it all together, but in the middle of class, our teacher began to speak about, we talked about Islam, we talked about Buddha, we talked about every religion, and then we came to Christianity, and she began to talk about God being three, and something instantly in my mind, that's wrong! It's not right. That's not who I am. And I just had, I didn't know nothing about oneness. I didn't know, I didn't have scriptures memorized. And I just, that's not right. And people's eyes began to be opened and the Lord used me. And I didn't have it together. I wish somebody would step out of the boat this morning. That you would just walk on the water. We're going to go into prayer this morning. And we're going to pray for a burden. Or faith and a burden to overcome our fear and just to step out. I really feel like somebody should just step out this morning. Maybe a stepping into more. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. I'm not really sure, but the Lord wants to use you. Pray with me. Lord, we love you. You love us. You love us. You love us. It's not performance-based. You really love us. Jesus, I pray. I pray for faith to rise in this place, to be everything that you have called us to be, to go after everything that you have put in our minds, Lord, everything. And Lord, every time the enemy comes at us, Lord, I pray that we don't forget that this covenant is one-sided. Lord, you are doing the work. You are doing all the work and saving a soul. And Lord, we surrender to you. Lord, I pray for the Holy Ghost to be poured out in this place this morning. I pray for people's faith and a burden to come over us to reach this world. We can do it. We can do it. God, Oh, Lord, let faith rise up right now, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I won't be discouraged. Distracted, even in the 
then I'm not done praising. Oh, if you're not done then I'm not done waiting. If you're not done moving, Lord, then I'm not done praising. If you're not done moving, if you're not done moving, then I'm not done waiting. somebody know it's not too late to get on board. It's not too late to come and go with us. It's not too late. I believe I have a word from the Lord this morning. Um, Pray not to get distracted. I wish we would all pray that same prayer. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do a little pastoring for a moment. When the power of God is moving in worship, move with it. Move with it. Say, so, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. I ain't talking about nothing physical. I'm talking about you get locked into the spiritual, the physical will follow. I'm troubled, very troubled in my spirit. We're so close to the coming of the Lord, we don't even realize. Matthew chapter 25 said they all slumbered and slept. God have mercy on the church that's asleep when the midnight hour approaches. God, have mercy on us. Brother David, I'm afraid we've lost our edge. I'm afraid we've lost that urgency that says work while it's day for night's coming when no man can work. I'm going to preach this morning and I'm going to preach a word from heaven and I'm going to invade your comfort zone. Yes, I am. Yes. And if you're feeling right now he's talking to me, guess what? You're right. You're right. Thankful for our guests that are here this morning. But I want you to know there's been a move of God in this place that was already enough. There's been a move of God that was already enough. Thank you, Brother Blake. There's been a move of God that was already enough to meet your need. Somebody needs to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. Somebody needs to repent of their sins today. Somebody needs to be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. It's your day. It's your day. I want you to turn to your neighbor, if you can. I know some of you 
said, when you turn, there ain't nobody there. I've been watching that Facebook stuff. But I want you to say, the wait is over. I want to tell you that in the middle of your waiting, there can be a shift. And even though nothing's happened, everything has changed in the middle of your waiting. I've had a word since I was in Maryville two weeks ago. Didn't know where I was going with it. It didn't make any sense. I didn't know how I could apply it to an evangelistic effort, reaching those that need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But uh, as usual, it all came together. So by the help of the Lord, I'm going to minister to you. I'd like for us to pray together right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray over this word. I pray over this congregation, this, this impressive group of people filled with potential from all walks of life. God, you know, yesterday that table we sat at had 15 incredible people that we didn't bring with us. And there were 18 of us total, God. But that, that same ability is in this room. That same power is in this room. That same potential for doing the work of the kingdom is in this room. And let the wait be over as we have waited be revealed in this house. Let the revelation of action be revealed in this place. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is the first chapter, first verse, first sentence in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. With these words, the Bible begins relaying to us the story of creation. And with these words are also the birth of the foundation of our faith. Genesis 1 and 1, if you can get it in your spirit and believe it, everything that follows will be no problem for you. God created the heaven and the earth. I need you to help me right now, Holy Ghost. If you think we're going through the motions like we do every other service, you're sadly mistaken. I want you to hear me right now. Get settled, get focused, whatever you got to do, get locked in because things better change today. They better change today. I know there's youngins and I know there's phones and I know there's people texting you that need you, but you need what's coming today more than you need to talk to them. I mean it. Lock in with me. This is nothing about my ego wanting people to follow uh, what I'm saying or wanting you to amen what I'm preaching, but this is about come go with what God is doing at the River Bend Pentecostals. Come join the revival. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Come join it and get in the moment. Get in this moment. God created the heaven and the earth. I am not angry. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. Those words gave birth to the foundation of our faith. We believe that God made the world and all that is therein. In six days, from the mind of God came this beautiful planet we live on. And it is beautiful. One only has to see the rush and feel the magnitude and even the fear that came up in me as I stood on the bridge over Niagara Falls. One only has to sit for a moment on the side where Jesus, of the hill where Jesus preached the message of the Sermon on the Mount to feel the power that still resonates in the breeze off the Sea of Galilee. One only has to, uh, for just one glimpse of the Grand Canyon as it makes its way or stand in the CN Tower in Toronto or, or look even at the Gateway Arch and, and look at things that, that with God's creation has risen from the earth. Some of them God put there. Some of them God let man make there. The Statue of Liberty is a beautiful thing, the Eiffel Tower. But at the end of the day, God made everything you see. Everything. And we believe that just as he created the heaven and the earth, he created us. You are not an accident. You are not a random mixing of a whim and fancy of a man or a woman. You are, I said you are not an accident. 
You are not here as a result of a two ships passing in the night when a man and a woman got together for a few moments uh, and you're the result of it. I want you to know that if you're walking, if you're breathing, and if you're living on planet Earth, uh, you're here because God wanted you here uh, and you're right where God wanted you uh, both in your life and today. There are no accidents uh, in the human race. Uh, There are no inconsequential people in the human race. Uh, You are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God and your soul better know it. Oh, hallelujah. It is in the opening words of John's gospel that we are offered a more clear glimpse into the mind of God. John says, in the beginning was the word. In the original Greek word, W-O-R-D, in that setting comes from the Greek word logos or logos, L-O-G-O-S. And in its simplest form, it is described as a play in the mind of a playwright before he ever puts a pen to paper. He has seen it, and before it is revealed to the masses, it is born in the mind of the playwright. It is that way that creation exists as planned by God. Before the earth was spoken into existence, it existed first in the mind of God. This plan of God was so beautiful and powerful and specific and perfectly ordered, structured, frame and covering, explicitly arriving when he spoke it, when he planned it, when he wanted it. Everything was just like God wanted it in creation. And the Bible follows creation with these words. And he saw that it was good which simply means to us, doesn't mean that he accomplished a good thing. It means, Brother Richard, that it happened just like I saw it. I said when he said, let there be light, and he saw it was good, Brother Austin, it's because it happened just like he saw it. It happened just like he planned it. Brother David, there is no disconnect between the logos and the creation. It came in just like God planned it. Can somebody say amen in the house? After the creation of man on the last day, God's crowning creation, the one he was most proud of was you and I, was man. God viewed all of his handiwork and the Bible says, and it was very good. Everything was just as he planned it. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Everybody say in Christ. Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him. Everybody say "In in him. Before the foundation of the world according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. It better start clicking with somebody. Just as sure as the mountains and the trees and the seas and the continents and the atmosphere and the sun and the moon and the planets and the stars are right where God wants them just like he wanted them because they came out of his mind in the perfect order of creation, so were you. The Apostolic Study Bible says what God elects is not determined by the pressures and the progression of time, but is from creation. And that includes his plans and his purpose for each of us. We were chosen in him. Everybody say in him again. Before the foundation of the world. He, matter of fact, if you want to view it like that, he created the world to put you in it. Before he could bring you into existence, he had to have a dwelling place for you. You are the reason 
for creation. You are the reason why God made heaven and earth. Without you, there would be none of this. He saw us. He saw us. We like to talk about when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. That's not quite true, Brother Blake, though it seems good. Truth is, I was on his mind a long time before Calvary. The fact that I was on his mind is why there is a Calvary. Revelation 13 and 8 says he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Brother David, his plan for my redemption was before creation. He saw us as a part of the Logos. And he had a perfect plan for us. I said he had a perfect plan for us. And that plan has not changed. I said that plan has not changed. We might now assume that he watches us longingly waiting for the opportunity to turn to heaven's host and say, it is good. We might now assume that he watches us longingly waiting to turn to the host of heaven's armies and say, Sheila Bailing is good. David Cowart is good. Sharon Cowart is good. Maria Allen is good. Why do we say that? Now, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new, what? He is a new creature. I want you to know that sin messed us up, uh, but Jesus came uh, that we might get a do-over. We might get to start all over again. Oh, my Lord, I wish somebody would hear this preacher. Your best days aren't behind you, they're ahead of you. Your best days haven't happened yet, they're still coming. Oh, please hear this preacher this morning. In Colossians 2 and 6, there's a powerful declaration. I love it. One of my favorite scriptures says, As you have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. It is when I receive the Holy Ghost that I am returned to where I got my start in Him. Because you see, Brother David, Brother Ronnie, Brother Marcus, Brother Cody, and Brother Cody, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. The Logos says creation started in the mind of God. Creation was imperfect and incomplete and went into disarray when sin was introduced into the world. Hear me that. Lions didn't kill lions till Adam and Eve sinned. There was no death. There was no blood. There was no sadness. There was no sorrow. There was no regret. There was no loss as long as man was where he belonged. But sin came in, and with the promise of thou shalt surely die came chaos into the world. And it rained until Calvary. But Jesus Christ came that we might be made free from the law of sin and death. But it is not activated in your life until you're born again. That's why it's called the new birth. It's a do-over. It's a start-over. I'm back where I started. Sister Ashley, I started in him. And when I'm filled with his spirit, once again, I'm back in him. Brother Blake, I'm not perfect yet, but I have what it takes to get me there. I'm not complete yet, but I have what it takes to get me there. 
because the book also says in the book of Colossians, and ye are complete in him. I don't know if we're getting this right now. But when you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, every ounce of potential that was in you before creation, every ounce of the plan of God that he had for your life before creation is activated. Oh, go ahead, Josh. Stand up, brother, with your hands up. That's what I'm talking about. You know what? That's why the book said I was lost, but now I'm found. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was hopeless, but now I have hope because Jesus Christ broke down that wall. He broke down that veil that would not let me in. Now I have hope. We should be clapping. We should be clapping to the Lord. We should be clapping. There's a reason why the psalmist said, clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. That's not when you win. That's because you're going to win. That's because you realize I am not defeated. I am not lost. I have hope. Beautiful thing to know that so powerful is his plan for us and so integral are we to fulfilling his purpose that he does not get impatient and he does not change his mind but he waits. We have come today by the help of the Lord to show us a different perspective of waiting. It's the one from heaven's point of view. God's perspective. Friday evening, Tripp and I were at Lowe's. He and Sister Soph got him a new refrigerator and it came in. And somebody forgot to tell the people that worked at Lowe's we was on the way to get it. And they weren't ready for us. And everybody decided to go to lunch when we showed up, except one person, and she was a new girl. And so in the process of time, it took her 45 minutes to allow a lady from Dexter to bring a commode back. So how do you know she's from Dexter? If we'd have stood there about 15 more minutes, I'd have known who her mama was, who her daddy was, or what she did for a living, where her husband lived at, and what her dog's name was. But there was a lady, when, when Tripp and I walked in, it was just the two of us. And we still waited, 45 minutes. Then here come another lady behind us. She's from Dexter too. Somebody lives at Dexter, tell them they need a Lowe's. <laughs> well, a new matter does too, for that matter, or something. And she walked in. And she stood behind us. And then here in a minute, here came another fella who stood behind her. And then here came another fella who stood behind him. And by the time we were still waiting, they was out to the door at the customer service desk. I was trying to put elements into action at Lowe's. <laughs> and I wasn't doing too bad. Because I kept reminding myself that's somebody's daughter. Well, that's somebody's wife. And if it was my daughter or my wife and somebody was acting like a jerk to them, they're going to give the undertaker some work. I really wasn't feeling quite that strong about it till the lady standing behind me and I, I told her, I said, we've been standing here a while. She said something, Brother David, powerful. She said, I don't like to wait. Don't like to wait. And guess what I said to her? Me either. <laughs> Truth is, there's something in our nature that is impatient. There's something in our nature that says we don't like to wait. Sister Nadine can testify, Brother Uncle Pete, he was just near about perfect, but he didn't like to wait. 
And if you let her stay around and visit for a few minutes longer after church than what he liked, he'd be pulled up out there by the door. And letting the car talk through the mouthpiece on the end of the steering wheel. We have a life and we want to live it and we don't want anybody or any circumstances to get in the way of what we got going. Oh, it's true. It's true. I ain't seen y'all standing in a line at Dairy Queen and just pull your car out of the side and tell everybody behind you, just come on up here. I don't mind waiting. We might all go up to the window and knock on it and offer to pay everybody's salary in the whole place if they'll just hurry up. You make your kids stand in the line at Walmart or you'll go ahead and get in line when you need six more items and tell them, go to the food and get this one, go to this one. I'm going to stand here and wait so we don't lose our spot because we don't like to wait. Can I get an Amen. amen. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were in bondage. They were enslaved. Egypt made their life tough. To say they struggled on the way out is an understatement. Just very quickly out of Egypt, they come to a large body of water called the Red Sea. As they stood at the water, not knowing what to do, they automatically, Brother Richard, turned around to look behind them. And when they looked behind them, immediately they were stricken with fear because there comes Pharaoh and his army after us. Just as quick, they turned to Moses and said, we don't like waiting. They turned to Moses and said, we had a good life in Egypt and you messed it up in a manner of speaking. We didn't really want to leave and you made us. Their first reaction was to fret and bemoan their situation. Very quickly they got prepared to be destroyed, defeated, killed, whatever Egypt wanted. But their predicament only had one real purpose. The fact that he brought them out of Egypt by great miracles and signs and wonders, that ship done sail, Brother Larry. The very fact that they're only out of Egypt because every firstborn son in the whole country died except those that were under the blood. But now just few hours, maybe a day or two, they're out of Egypt and all of a sudden, all is lost. That only happened, that only, they only were brought to that place of tension because God wanted to teach them to trust him. And I will tell you that making us wait is the most often used vehicle God uses to make us learn to trust him. So we got a problem. We don't like to wait. But God is going to use the wait, Brother Ronnie. We got a problem. See, God had a plan and a purpose for Israel. He had a land that was waiting on them. But their enemies weren't going to just lay down and give them the land, so they had to learn to trust God to bring it to pass. But if they would learn to trust God, he was going to bring them through every battle. He was going to help them overcome any and all opposition because he had a plan for them. And it wasn't a new plan. It wasn't a plan, Sister Maria, that he formulated when he heard them crying from Egypt's taskmasters. He, the Lord did not say, Sister Leanne, when, when the Egyptians took away their straw and made life tough on them, he didn't say, boy, I better figure out something to save these people. You see, Sister Dana, he had a plan from them. You want to know how far back? Because in the beginning, 
was the word, the logos, the plan of God. It was in his mind from the beginning. This was an ongoing struggle. Every opposition they faced, they failed it more than they passed. Can somebody say amen? amen. Been there and done that. They were brought into place of tension so many times and they failed almost every one of them. Now they're at Mount Sinai and Moses, their leader, has gone up on the mountain to meet with God to get the guidelines for them to follow that will prepare them for living in the promises of God. That will prepare them, empower them, give them structure for fulfilling the plan of God in the promised land. I thought he was just going to come turn me loose in Canaan. No, he never did that. Because when you get there, he's got a plan for you there. And in order to see the plan and purpose come to God, you're going to have to be in order. Trust me, you ain't going to outweigh him. Because uh -uh. all we see is right now. He sees eternity. Moses climbed up the mountain to meet God. And now, everybody say now. now. He's been gone nearly 40 days. Exodus chapter 32, verse number 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down the mount, they gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Get up, make us some gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. Can I tell you what they were saying to Aaron? Been gone too long. We're tired of waiting. Aaron said unto them, Break off your golden earrings in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. All the people broke out their golden earrings and brought them to Aaron, and he took their golden earrings and he melted them down, and he took a, engrav a graving tool and he made a molten calf a golden calf out of their earrings. And they said, and then he said to them, I wanted to smack him, big dummy. He took their earrings that used to be on their ears, Sister Maria. Just a little bit ago, they were sporting them around on their ears. And then he took them off and threw them in a fire somewhere. And he took a graven tool and made a golden calf out of it. And then he stood back and held his hand up and said, there's your God. There's your God. No, 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 he didn't stop there. He said, there's your God, O Israel, that brought you up out of Egypt. Oh, come on. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and they offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That's all they wanted in the first place. The reason why they didn't want to wait is it was interrupting their flow, interrupting their style. They began to eat and to drink and rose up to play. The only reason I don't like waiting is because it's me getting put on hold and I'm the most important person the world has ever seen. Why did they never learn to trust God? Why didn't they trust him? And when they had a good reason, come on, Holy Ghost, help me right now. When they had a good reason, they attempted to turn the true God into a God of their own imagination. The good reason they had was Moses left and he's been gone too long. And we're tired of waiting. Look at verse 7 though. Oh Lord, look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, because he's God like that who's talking to Moses up on the mountain in the middle of the fire and in the middle of the smoke and in the middle of the thunder and all of that and he's watching them at the same time because he's a God like that. 
why you, oh, I don't want to preach it right now, but I will. That's why you can't put him into some little old rinky-dink image of your cast-off jewelry. The Lord said to Moses, you better get down, boy, for thy people. I like that. The Lord done said, I don't know if they're mine or not. He said, thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Look what he says. Give me the next verse. They have turned aside quickly. Wait just a minute. Lord, I just felt the brush of the Holy Ghost come in here because somebody like, hmm. for them, 40 days was too long. And it, 40 days is worth giving up what you know to be true to try to revive something you once cried to get out of. 40 days. We're talking about just over a month, five weeks or thereabouts. And they were moaning and groaning and they had their, they had their arms crossed and they were watching their watches and making sure they worked and they're moaning and complaining and griping because everybody knows you just don't explode into rebellion but you give birth to it. It was way too long this time he made us wait. But Sister Maria, the Lord said, look how quickly they turned their back on me. Why did it seem quick to the Lord? I was hoping you would ask because he's been waiting since creation to give them the law to give them the structure that they need and they couldn't hold out just over a month. Way different perspectives, Brother Blake. Oh, he's not coming back. He's long gone. I can't believe we just wasted 40 days. We could have just got to work on day one. That rascal has abandoned us. He's left us. Maybe a wild animal has killed him. We got tired of waiting on this God of ours to give us some direction. So we're just going to do it the way we feel like we ought to do it. And the only frame of reference they have for another God is the one they watched the Egyptians worship while they were in bondage. I want you to know I'm preaching this morning. I want you to hear me right now. For the people, 40 days was too long to wait. For God, it happened quickly. Their failure was quick. God's been waiting since the beginning and they can't wait for just over a month. God's plan for us has been in him since the beginning. We have to trust him. We have to wait according to his timeline and not ours. But there's a problem. We don't like to wait. The book of Psalms is an incredible book of praise and adoration. How many love Psalms? The 23rd Psalm could possibly be the most read chapter in the Bible. Psalms deals with opposition and it deals with the beauty of overcoming that opposition. It repeatedly declares the sovereignty, the beauty, the authority, and the dominion of God Almighty. Its words and its lyrics and its uh, resonance and, and its uh, um, uh, rhythmic uh, poetry is beautiful even to people that don't live for God. Psalms is an incredible book. But there's a theme introduced in Psalm chapter number one and it's developed in Psalm chapter number two and this is the theme that there's a big difference between the righteous and the wicked. I said there's a big difference between the righteous and the wicked. Psalm 37 begins to unpack this theme and offers a major advance to this theme because it speaks of the righteous as those that trust in Jesus Christ and the wicked of those as those who go their own way, refusing to wait on the Lord. Psalm chapter 37, verse number one says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers 
neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. Now fretting refers, if you look it up in the original, it refers to the pressure that builds up within us when our flesh begins to reach for something that we know we're not supposed to have. It is a kindled fire apparently lit by our perception of those that don't have to follow the Bible, those that don't have to go to church, those that don't have to give in the offering, those that don't have to live a life pleasing to God, looks to me like they're living the high life. They do whatever they want, treat people however they want, drink whatever they want, smoke whatever they want, sleep with whoever they want, and every time I see them, they got a smile on their face. Huh? They're living the good life, and I'm in bondage. They don't have to submit themselves to the will of God. They're free and they're happy. Say, the, we don't do that. We must or the Bible wouldn't say it. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. I heard somebody yawn. I'm getting ready to go. Not go home. Go into preaching where you ain't sleeping no more. Look, he said, for the wicked... Hear me right now. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Don't you be fooled by their apparent joy in living in iniquity. Don't you be fooled by their smile on their face because they get to sleep with a different girl every night, fellas. Because their meat house is coming down, trust me. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. This is simply a precursor to Galatians 6 and 9 which says don't be weary in well doing. For if you keep on sowing the right seed, you're going to reap the right harvest. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. I've preached this before. I'm going to preach it again. Please stop quoting that to people and telling people on Facebook that if you be good, God will give you a new house or a new car. That's not what that says. Stop telling people that. I see it. Delight thyself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. You want a Cancun vacation? Just go to church five weeks in a row. No! The gift is the desire. When you delight yourself in the Lord, your want to changes. He puts the right want to in you. And that is a want to that is not dictated to us by the world. Oh, I wish somebody would realize uh, that the world is hungry for what you got. Uh, you don't see, you see them out there, you know you know, shaking her booty on the dance floor and you wonder, I wish I could be like that. But you don't know that they go home crying. You don't know that they go home beaten and battered and bruised and wounded. You don't know that they lay there awake every night wishing for the peace that you have. Trust me when I tell you they want what you got because that's what they were created for. He said, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Don't stop following the way of the Lord. Just keep trusting him. Y'all understand what that's saying, don't you? Wait. But I don't like to wait. He said, wait. But I don't like to wait. But he said, wait. And if you hold on, verse 6 says, and he's going to bring your righteousness forth. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. 
Because if you hold on, that one you've been watching and that one that looked like they're living a good life, God's going to put you in a place of elevation and in a place of light uh, where you're going to be the one they come looking for when they need answers. Not only will you see it, but those you were once watching, they are really watching you. And you know what? Ah, Holy Ghost, help me right now. You know what? They ain't watching how you dress. And they ain't watching where you don't go. They're watching to see how long you'll wait. Oh, God have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost. Do you trust him long enough to, to go through poor times? Do you trust him to go through lonely times? Do you trust him to go through weak times? Do you trust him to stick it out? Oh, my God, have mercy. They know that the whole world don't like to wait. Everything depends on us not quitting. Oh, don't you turn me off. Come on now. We ain't, we're getting there. We're getting there. I know what time it is. Verse 7. This is so important. Don't miss it. 7, 8, 9. The whole message rests on it. It says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. I looked it up. This is my dilemma. This is why I struggled. Because I knew God gave me this, but it didn't make sense. Because I found what I'm about to reveal to you. Wait patiently for him. Wait patiently comes from the Greek word, I can't say it right, from the Hebrew word, excuse me, not Greek, Hebrew in the Old Testament, C-H-U-W-L, chul. And it is a waiting that is restless. It is the battle of patience fought within us. It is the set down, for five minutes and then you run to the window and you look out like that's going to make them get there quicker you know what I'm talking about it's the pacing and walking boy I hate waiting on somebody I hate waiting on somebody that's what kind of waiting is talking about it means to writhe to twirl oh my it, it, okay look at it come on anybody been here with me before come on I go to the waiting room at the doctor's office Amanda refuses to let me go to the doctor with her unless I just put my foot down because I will open every cabinet in that waiting room. I'll look in every drawer in that waiting room. I will walk around. I will crack the door open to see if somebody's coming. I'll put my ear to the wall and see if I can hear them. Is that not the truth, honey? Huh? She finally said, you can't go with me no more. But that's the kind of waiting we're talking about right here. He said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And I, Lord, you better come through. Oh, Lord, we've been doing this for too long. You better come through. You better hold on. It is, the word means to writhe, twirl, to spin. He said, wait patiently for me. And somebody said, I can't. I don't like to wait. We're being pulled by the flesh and the spirit. It's in that waiting where we see a better alternative right there, if we just stop waiting and go to it, it'll fix everything. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you this is a Bible that the world reads every day. People know what's right, but they choose what's wrong because they don't like to wait. says, fret not thyself. Don't let that pressure build up inside of you that says, I got to do something. Don't fret yourself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. That's simply a refrain of chapter 1, verse 1. 
It says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not. There's that word again. He says it over and over again. Don't let that stuff build up inside of you. Oh, I'm going to say this. Go talk to your sponsor. Somebody better get it down inside of them. God has a plan for me that he's been waiting to bring to pass since before he said, let there be light. God has a plan for me that means more to him than the Grand Canyon, that means more to him than the Rocky Mountains, that means more to him than the beautiful sunset and the moon and the stars. says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. And somebody say, "Uh uh-oh. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Say, what does that mean? That's what you're planning to do while you're waiting. Because here's what we'll do, Brother Ronnie, if they don't come in five more minutes. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my stuff and I'm out of here. I'll go somewhere else. They told me it was a 30-minute wait at Chili's. And if it gets to 31 minutes, I'm gone. If I've, I've been waiting here 28 and a half minutes, I'm watching. I'm watching. And I'm not going to wait a minute longer. I'll go to Olive Garden and I'll wait six cotton-picking hours. But I'm not giving them a penny here if they don't come when I want them to. Stop being mad and forsake wrath. And I'm just going to throw this out there. If you're standing in a crowd of people and they told you 30 minutes at the restaurant and it's 35 minutes, let me tell you what you better stop doing. You better stop watching your watch and start looking around and ask yourself this question. Reckon why he's got me waiting. I don't live my life according to the maitre d' schedule. I'm, uh, woo, I'm under a mandate from heaven. When I roll out of the bed in the morning, I'm walking in promise, and I'm walking in purpose, and I'm walking in the will of God. Woo. Will y'all feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place? Listen to me, folks. It says, for evildoers shall be cut off. Let me tell you something. You ain't getting away with all that wrongdoing you got on the slick. Don't think you pulled anything off on nobody. Because we don't believe that God wants you to live under pressure, but I want you to know he's still watching. You ain't got away with jack squat. And before your day of reckoning, you better find a place to repent. And if necessary, you call AT&T or Charter or whoever and tell them you don't want the Internet no more. I just hit a nerve, but it's a true nerve. You want to know why we go look at naked women and naked men on the Internet? Because we don't like waiting. We want something that satisfies us. We want it right now. Oh, man, I'm feeling like when we was at Renew, Brother Shannon, remember Brother Woodward hit that thing? I just hit it. I just hit it. It's all about self-gratification. That huzzy on that computer don't know you. She ain't never going to know you, and she wouldn't look at you twice if she did. But you'll convince yourself she's in love with you. Because I want it right now. I want it right now. And in the fantasy world, I can be anybody I want to be, and I can be them right now. Oh, Lord. Man, Marcus, <laughs> I didn't ever think I'd hear that again. <laughs> My brother 
just said, come on, Jesus. <laughs> there was a time I didn't think I'd hear that ever again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm so glad, Sister Kim, we didn't get tired of waiting. I'm so glad we didn't get tired of waiting. Say, well, he ain't perfect yet. Well, neither are you. you to forget me. God's ministering in this place right now. He's ministering. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord. Hear me right now. He said, evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord. Now, Sister Heidi, would you throw verse 7 back up there for me again? Can you back up to 37 and 7? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And then I hopped over to verse 9. Pull it up again. It says, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, I started looking at it, and I pulled up Bible Hub. If you don't do that, you need to start. It'll open up the Bible to you. And I pulled up Bible Hub, and I looked at it in the original. And the first, number seven, it gave the word chul, and it talks about a a, a uh, arrive and the, the word says wait patiently but, but brother Richard I can't wait patiently until I got to verse 9 and I looked it up and oh my goodness it's not the same word it's a different word it's kava q-a-v-a-h and this is what it means. When you take something weak and wrap it around something strong till it gains strength. The picture Brother Williams painted in the Dominion Bible study is it means you take a chain. That's God. And a piece of thread. That's me. And you weave it between every link on that chain until if you're going to break the thread, you got to first break the chain. You see, here's what happened. Verse number seven said, you better wait on the Lord. And Brother David, the Spirit said, boy, I want to wait, but I see it out there. I want to wait, but I see it out there. But you know what's happened in verse number nine? I made my mind up. I made a decision. I've come to a place. I ain't going out there. I'm going to stick with him. And even, no, hear me right now. Even though I'm still waiting, and somebody better say praise the Lord right now. Even though I'm still waiting, I'm waiting in a different place than I was waiting yesterday. I'm not no more wringing my hands and wandering around. But I decided to weave my life in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decided to take his strength. So I'm going to keep waiting. And Sister Dana, guess what? Tomorrow I'm going to wait. And you know what I'm going to do the next day? I'm going to wait because I ain't worried no more. Can you see the picture? Can you see the picture? We went from fleshly waiting to heavenly waiting. And they're two different things. 
they're two different things. It still ain't happened. I tell you, this will revolutionize your walk with God. It still ain't happened. But I'm not waiting in my own strength anymore. Come to the music, please. Yep, yep. But the Holy Ghost said, come go with me. It may not happen today. And you know why it may not happen today, Brother Richard? Because you ain't ready for it. But he said, wrap yourself in me. Wrap yourself in me, Brother Kevin. And we'll wait together. You know why that's so powerful? It's because, guess where he's going, Sister Sheila? You know where he's going? To the place he had in mind in the beginning. He's not going to take me to just a good place. He's not just going to take me to a high place. He's going to take me to the perfect place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I don't have to hold on my own strength. But when I'm wrapped around him, I'll gain strength. Amen. Isaiah 14, 31. Please stand with me. But they that wait upon the Lord. Don't jump ahead of me because we got to decide first what kind of weight is this talking about? The stressful one? Or the, guess what word it is? Kava. And it means the way to wait on the Lord is wrap yourself in Him. But look at here. Look at here. Look at here. Look at here. There's coming a day. when the holding on comes to an end. And you know what the book says, Sister Corey? They shall renew their strength. Oh, it's beautiful, but it ain't the best part. Because guess what I did? I went back to Bible Hub, and I looked up renew. And you know what it means? Give me Isaiah 40 and 31. It's all right. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, you better be ready for me. I looked up renew, and you know what it means? Get ready, Sister Callie. Get ready, sis. Get ready, my good friend, Jonathan. You know what it means? It means passing through. You know what that means, Sister Peaches? I only got to weave myself through that chain till I pass through the weight. But guess what happens then? They shall mount up. Woo! <laughs> while I'm, while I'm, whoo! You know what it means, Brother David? If I weave myself through him, you know how long I can stay there? Till I make it through. Somebody ought to get excited in the Holy Ghost right now. He ain't going to cast you aside. He's not going to tell you you're on your own. But when he turns loose of us, Brother David, my good friend Ronnie Henson, I wish he was, he wrote a song one time that said, I've heard once a bird has a broken wing, it'll never fly high again. But let me tell you what, Brother Ronnie, that ain't always true. Because I'm just going to wrap myself up in him until I get strong. 
And it's not going to be a matter of I don't need him anymore, Brother David. It's going to be a matter of I waited on him until he was done waiting on me and he loosed me into my anointing and I'm not crawling, I'm not slithering, but I'm flying. What is more? Hear me right now. They shall run and won't get weary. They'll walk and not faint. See why, you know why I can fly? Because I got back in him. That's the only place I've ever been complete. That's the only place I've ever been perfect. And you know what's happened, Brother Blake? Look at this. It's so beautiful. I wish I could, I really wish that one of these days I'm going to get this right. I'll preach it somewhere else and it's going to be beautiful. Listen, Sister Leanne, you know what happened? I came back to the only perfect place there is in the mind of God. And now he can't tell no difference in me from what he thought of me in creation to what I'm doing in the spirit. I look just like he wanted me to. And guess what's going to happen, Brother Austin? I'm going to walk into the throne room. I'm going to walk before the judgment seat of Christ. And he is going to say to me, Well done, thou... Woo, baby. I thought the good was about what I had done. No, 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 no. The good is what he done. Brother Larry, he stepped back and said, it's good. It's good. Just like I planned it. One waiting is where I'm torn between the promises of God and the promises of the world. One will satisfy my soul and my life. One is for a moment. The other perspective ends with well done, my good and faithful servant. I know we don't like waiting, but I found a new reason to wait, Brother Blake. Brother Austin's got a plan for you, my friend. Brother Seth, he's got a plan for you, my friend. Sister Leanne, he's got a plan for you. Here we go. Sister Brindley, has got a plan for you. Sister Crystal, he's got a plan for you. Everybody in here, God's got a plan for you. And until you get there, wait on the Lord. These altars are open. Come on, won't you wind yourself between the chains of the lot, the links of a chain that'll never be broken? Sing. Go, brother. Come on, brother Larry. Come on. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small. He's waiting on you. That Jesus came. Oh, you stop wringing your hands today. You stop fretting today. You stop being tantalized by the world today. How God cares about us. So wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. what he said and you shall
there's a
such a powerful song I catch myself many times while I'm waiting on something brother Ronnie I'll just mumble them words just wait on the Lord and he'll renew your strength 
And before you know it, while I'm waiting, me and heaven meet. And I forget what I'm even waiting on, Brother Austin. Ain't that funny how that works? That in the midst of, you're, you come to that valley of decision, Brother Larry, and you can either allow the devil to, to give in to the devil and, and sin or do whatever it is that you was wanting to do, get mad, start cussing, whatever it is. Or you can allow the Lord to renew your strength. And in the midst of your waiting, you forget what you was even waiting on, Sister Crystal. Just, and then you get a whole new blessing out of it. Amen. You can all be seated. Before I get into the announcements, I, I'm reminded uh, of something Brother Anthony Trimble said right before he passed away while he's fighting colon cancer. In the last days of his life, he said this. Uh, but he spoke about the, the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And the Bible says that whenever they cast Daniel in there, that they sat around listening. Brother David, they wanted something bad to happen to him. But they didn't hear nothing. And that's the thing. They didn't hear nothing. While the people were standing around, they should have been hearing gnashing of teeth. They should have been hearing the lions eating Daniel. They couldn't hear nothing. Because the Bible says that the Lord shut the lions' mouths. And he said, don't mistake God's silence. Don't mistake God's silence for him not being there because that's just the lions not getting you. The, the, the things that you're waiting on, the things that you've been battling in your mind and in your spirit, it may not look like the, the, the answer's there. It may not look like that you got where you wanted to get. But there's power in the silence. Amen. There's power because the devil didn't get you. There's some people that may not have got what your, your answer is today. You may be here today right now still waiting. There may be silence, but there's power in that silence. The devil ain't got to you. You're here today for a reason. You're here today, and we can rejoice that you're here today. Amen. You may not be where you're going to be. Brother Blake, we may not be where we're going, but we ain't been where we used to be. We may be still waiting, but we're waiting in a new place, and we're waiting in a new way. Amen. I want to go through the announcements. The secret sister drawing is today. Um, there's also a rally tonight in Steele at 4.54 p.m. And we, we have that at 4.54 because we go and we have focused prayer before the service. But I do want to reiterate also that it's not a youth rally. Tonight's rally is not a youth rally. We have that happen almost every rally. Everybody seems to think it's a youth rally, and they don't go or they miss out. And then later they're thinking, man, I would have went if I didn't think that. But it's not a youth rally. This is just a rally that we're going to come together and we're going to, ha and Brother Cornejo is going to preach it. And he preached the rally last year. How many of you went down to Kennett last year at that rally? Amen. We had many people filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And, and that's one of the services that I will remember for the rest of my life. It was powerful. He is used in the gifts of seeing people filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if you need it, come tonight expecting it. Amen. I, I said, if you need the Holy Ghost, come tonight expecting it. And you will leave with it. If you need a miracle, come tonight with an expectation. And you will leave with it. Ladies, prayer is tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Church cleaning in this week is team number six. That's the Esther House girls. Amen. <laughs> Community day is coming up. It's Tuesday, May the 3rd. Um, we are also going to have a missionary with us Wednesday. This coming up Wednesday, April 6th. And due to the sensitive nature of his mission, there will be no Facebook Live. So if you're watching right now and, and you, you want to watch Wednesday night, we're not going to be live due to sensitive uh, things that are going on overseas. And, and he just cannot be broadcasted. But if, I will encourage you, though, if you're watching online, be here. Come see us in person. Let this be the thing that triggered you to make that decision and come for the first time. Uh, Riverbend kids are going to Discovery Park of America this Saturday, April the 9th. The bus will leave from the church at 8 a.m. Cost is $10 per person. And we need to know by this Wednesday if you're going. There will be a bridal shower for Garrison and Paige, April the 23rd at 2 p.m. at the New Madrid Community Building right down here, down the road. And they're registered at Amazon, Target, Walmart, and Victorian Gift Shop in Malden. 
There's a basket auction for Riverbend Ignited Youth Camp. If you'd like to donate a basket, please see Sister Amanda or Sister Meredith for details. Baskets are due by April 10th. Bidding ends May 1st. And Missouri Ladies Conference, April 28th through the 30th at Chateau on the Lake. That's in Branson, Missouri. Early registration fee uh, for regular attendees is $55. And that's through April 12th of this year. Late, registr le late registration after April 12th will be $75, so you want to register before then. Um, you can visit MissouriLadiesMen.org, sign-up sheets in the back of the church if you want more information on that. And uh, before I do birthdays and offering or birthdays and anniversaries, I forgot to mention that the bus is leaving at 4 o'clock sharp tonight. So if you're going to the rally, and we will have a way of transportation, transportation. the bus is going, but it's leaving at 4 o'clock. So if you want to be there and you ain't got a ride, See if you can get here at the church by 4 o'clock to catch that ride. Amen. Is there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? You got us a birthday. Moving on up. Amen. We'll sing with Sister Kaylee. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you ever had. Amen. Can we all stand in that place today? Why don't we just give the Lord a hand clap real quick for what we heard in this place? what we felt in this place. Amen. He's worthy of more than I can give him. He's worthy. Amen. Brother Terrence, why don't you come up here and dismiss this prayer. I, I've been meaning to it. We've been doing it from the side, but the people online don't get to hear his prayer. And uh, there's power even in a dismissal prayer. Amen. So he's going to dismiss us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this word, Lord. We just thank you for your love and your mercy and grace. Lord, help us to wait. Even when it hurts us to wait, Lord, help us to wait on you for what you have for us, Lord, because the end goal is way greater than anything that we could ever imagine, Lord. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for your hand of protection on us, Lord. Lord, just keep your hands on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shake a visitor's hand. Let them know that you're glad. We're better that they're here. In Jesus' name.